holiness, man, he just keeps on speaking that to me. And obviously that's all of who Jesus is. You know, he's holy. I'm a worship pastor. I love any song, any song that will just sing holy, holy, holy. You have a hard time worshiping now. Like we're going to be doing that in eternity. Like, <laughs> yep. you know, like he, he goes like, you're grumpy like this, like through worship now. Yeah. But like in eternity, that's what we're going to be doing, you know? So get used to it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's something special that I get to give them. And I'll even write notes to like their, to my wife in here that they'll be able to see this is how I love Jamal. We sometimes dance around these topics, you know, as yeah. far as like, you know, because we don't want to hurt, you know, our brother in Christ. We, you know, sure. we just talked about that as being, you know, Christian against Christian. But I do think there needs to be some accountability. Online has been very, you know, enemy driven for so long with this, yeah. this the, the worldliness and stuff like that. And not to say that there isn't some good out there. Of course there is. If he took it away or if you did, I'm not going to be depressed about this. I'm like, Lord, you have me. You have my family. I'm just going to laugh. I'm saying that while I'm crying. I'm just going to laugh, Lord. I'm just going to laugh. It ain't getting my joy. So, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I Like Birds podcast. I'm so excited that you've joined us today. I'm your host, Zach Grippy, and I got my guest, my man, my friend, Kenneth Clary in the building today. He's a worship leader. He's a father. He's a husband. He has his own podcast with his wife, and he's just doing some amazing things in the kingdom world, in the business world. And uh, our paths have been crossing a lot recently. Uh, we saw each other at church last Sunday yep. unexpectedly when uh, his church ran. Uh, there was a storm that came through, and the Blew power got swiped yep. out, and he showed up at my church while I was thinking about <laughs> him in the pews of yeah. like being a, a great guest to invite on and he's actually uh was at the same event that i was at this past week with yeah. with uh, lisa schwartz uh we did crazy eight ministries city on the hill city on a hill uh at burleson high school and he was leading worship there and actually david you said it was our guest and he was talking about uh, my mentor kenneth my mentor kenneth on the episode nonstop, yeah. and i'm like <laughs> okay that's cool like he didn't give me no last name he didn't give me no <laughs> nothing but then i talked to him he's like oh that's what i was talking about ken i was like are there you serious you go. so yeah. i feel like the lord is just like putting you in my life a, uh, a lot in this season for yeah. a reason and uh, i'd love to have you on. i love uh, obviously you're here but i wanted to get you on and i'm um, super yeah. excited you join us man yeah man i'm so glad to be part of this thanks for having me on and uh yeah just looking forward to uh just our relationship kind of continuing to grow. It's, it's it's just interesting how the Lord is kind of just, it seems like he's brought this very organically. And uh, even though we haven't talked much, like I feel like I know you like, you know, yeah. like pretty well, you know, I feel yeah. like we just connect. So I'm, I'm excited. Thanks for having me on the, on the well, show, man. Heck yeah, man. And I think you're going to be a blessing to the show. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear about your journey and your story as well as just, you know, just talking about Jesus, man. I think that, yep. you know, a lot of times we have guests and we talk about like their story because obviously we all have our own testimony and, once we share our testimony, God's willing to do it again for somebody else out there listening. Yeah. But, um, you know, let's just start talking about Jesus real quick, man. And yeah. like uh, we were talking pre-show about how you're interested in the Old Testament. You love the Old <laughs> Testament. Yeah. You're studying the the early prophets because it connects with John's revelation yep. in such a big way. So what, what are some of the, the things that God is downloading on your heart in this season through the word? Man, I, like if I, had to, if I had to sum it all up, it, it would probably be just the fear of the Lord. You know, I think there's a... I mean, again, that's, it's like a whole can of worms opening up that thing. But but I really believe that the Lord is just uh, really eager to restore the fear of the Lord in his people. And I think when when you have the fear of the Lord, it uh, it brings about holiness. There's a reverence there. And his people uh, begin value, begin to value again what holiness is. And the, the beautiful thing about Jesus is that, you know, our inheritance through his blood is holiness. And whenever we are you know pursuing purity that's us basically coming under that covering and saying lord i'm choosing to co-labor and partner into your holiness and choosing to be covered by the blood and it's just accepting that inheritance and so um so yeah holiness man he just keeps on speaking that to me and obviously that's all of who jesus is you know he's holy um you know i'm, I'm a worship pastor i love any song, any song that will just sing holy, holy, holy over and over. Because as I, we were saying, you know, on, on pre-show, it was just like, that's that's the songs of the throne room, man. Yeah. Those are the songs we're going to be singing forever. We, we, won't, we won't have to sing songs of, of uh, uh, Lord, you know, pull me out of the muck today, do all this. It's like, no, Lord, we're seeing you face to face now. Holy, yeah. worthy is your name, you know? So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah, just a lot of, lot of downloads, a lot of stuff he's been pouring out on me the, the the best thing he's just been giving me though is himself and uh even even if i'm reading you know some of these minor prophets and i'm like what the heck is being said right here like i was reading habakkuk earlier today and i'm like dude i have no idea what's going on i, I i'm just i'm like but i heard the lord say he's like just keep reading it keep reading and so uh 
did I get any huge revelation? Like maybe a few parts, but not like what, like big time. But at the end of the day, I just know, even though I may not understand it, it's nourishing me. And so uh, I'm just going to trust the process with it and just trust that his presence and, and the spirit is just going to bring, bring upon revelation as, as we read his word. And uh, so, yeah. So, okay. well, while you have it open, I see that you circle, you highlight in different colors, you arrow, <laughs> you star. What is your process like when it comes to yeah. that? Because I do feel like a lot of people that listen to this show um, have are new to the faith and maybe new to reading the word. So like, what is yeah. some encouragement that you do that you maybe just giving some insight about your, your sure. studying process and just breaking it down for us? Yeah. So my, the, the, the way that, that I study is uh, uh, it's, it's really basic. It's, it, I've, I've never liked devotionals. I've never been like a huge devotional Same person. Right. Um, I don't know why I just don't really care for them. And uh I had a person a long time ago, he said, like, what he does is he reads a chapter of, you know, any book. He reads that chapter and reads it every day for, for a week, and then he moves on. And so I've just continued since I was a freshman in high school. I've been applying that continually all the way I'm 30 now. And uh, I'll stay on the same book, the same passage, the same one verse um, for, like, at least a week typically, if not wow. lo longer than that. And then I find myself all the time circling back to it like a month or two later. Um, so like even reading like Ezekiel, I was talking to, to, to David uh, earlier today about Ezekiel 44. And I'm like, man, the Lord keeps bringing me back to this. He revealed it to me two years ago. And I come back to it like every three months. He won't, he won't let me leave it for whatever reason. What's it about? Uh, Ezekiel 44 talks about the restoration of the priesthood. Okay. And um, you know how Israel has just been like, basically been prostituting the presence of the Lord Um not considering him holy, not consider, not having the fear of the Lord. That's that's what it is. So the restoration of the priesthood, um, you know, he, he says, you know, there are some priests who've been ministering to me who have not kept the holy things holy. So they can be gatekeepers, but they can't minister before me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how heartbreaking is that to like, you are called to be before him face to face. And then you're told, hey, you can be at the gate, but you can't be in my presence anymore. And so... You know, the Lord, he ends up uh, telling telling Ezekiel, and Ezekiel's given this word and saying the, the, the descendants of Zadok will be the ones who will restore the priesthood. They are to teach between what's um, holy and not holy, what's common and what's not common, all these things. Um, you know, there's parts of it where he even says, I, I love, because the, there's a part whenever it's in there, and he says, uh, they are to wear white linen, but tell them, do not sweat. And I was, I remember reading that like a year ago. I'm like, Lord, why would you tell him not to sweat? I'm like I, I lead worship every Sunday and I'm sweating profusely. <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? And uh, I just had revelation poured out uh, as I just continually just went into it for over a week, you know, a month or so just reading it. And, uh, and he said, I, I, he said, I told them not to sweat cause I don't want them to strive and uh, they don't have to strive in my presence, you know? So anyways, but yeah, there's that, that big, the Lord has just been speaking that message to me, the restoration of the priesthood. So I shared that with David today and we're, we're talking about that on some things. And, um, but yeah, but the way I approach my, my Bible now is a, a lot of what you're seeing, like, as you're looking at it just now, you know, I have my notes, my highlighting, there's no really big method to it. Um, there's things that are for me in, in there, but, uh, this is, I'm more looking at my Bible as a journal for my kids. So, um, wow. so I have like in the, on the front page of my Bible, a dedication, like a full page saying like, this is what I want you to get out of this. At the end of Malachi, I have, you know, a letter to my kids one day dated and saying, I love you. Just things like that. It's funny that you mentioned that your son is Malachi. Yeah. And, uh, on just before I came and up Ezekiel. here, no kidding, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so What's crazy is that uh, I, I heard the Lord say today, as I came back to this passage after reading Habakkuk, I heard him say that uh, one of your kids are going to have a son named Malachi. And so uh, so I'm like, I'm just going to write it down at the end of this book. So I, I had a vision that one of, one, of, one of you is going to name your son Malachi, and he shall fear the Lord. And I dated it. So... Um, and then I prayed for him on the way up here. And then you're telling me your son's Malachi. I'm like, oh, Lord, you're just oh, confirming hey, this. Let's and go. Uh, so, yeah, so one day I'll give this to my kids and, and they'll be able to see every prophetic promise that I've prayed wow. over them. And, 
and just the goodness of his word. So yeah, it's bro. It's let's cool. go. I'm yeah. hype about that right now. Yeah. I love that. Cause it just inspired me to like, why didn't I ever think that my kids would want to read like the, the revelations I was having through the mm. Lord in here. Yeah. So like that just motivated me, encouraged me to like start doing that yeah, same man. practice. So I'm glad I asked that question. And yeah. uh, I actually have an email set up for my oldest son. His name's Noah. I got the idea, make somebody like when I was like, I don't know, when he was like two or three years old, put the idea out on Facebook, like create an email for your kid. Yeah. Send them emails, give them the email mm. uh, when they that's cool. When they uh, hit 18 or whatever age you want or whatever, uh, set it up for them now and stuff like that. So, you know, throughout, you know, we'll have a great summer together. I'll kind of fill them in on what we did together. I'll, you know, share something that's going on as far as like emotionally or with the, with the family that's mm. like, you know, just really kind of filling him in in the gaps of like his childhood and his life because him and his, him and, um, my, his mom and I were split up after um, we had him about a mm. year uh, around that time. So like we've done a lot of the co-parenting things. So there's a lot of his life that I've missed out on because sure. of that. Yeah. So um, creating that email has been such a blessing because it's really allowed me to like kind of communicate with his older self yeah. at this age and just kind of filling him in on things that That's like good, are man. from the heart, you know, and yeah. um, just the way we would feel when we would separate and we would you know he'd have to go back to school and we'd hug and we'd cry and all that yeah. stuff you know and just being able to be raw and real with him to when he's ready for that to see one day like mm. yo dad was like talking to me like i don't, I don't know i just think it's powerful and yeah. but like knowing that you do that because we have more than one kids and uh, me and my wife have a couple kids malachi and ezekiel mm. and um that kind of just inspired me to be like all right i don't have an email set up for them because like yeah. they're here they yeah. they seem but like that that would be something special yeah. you know so yeah i'm I really see, like like, like this is the journal that they'll get one day from me you know yeah. and wow. so uh so yeah yeah it's, it's it's just something cool it's, it's something special that i get to give them and i'll even write notes to like their to my wife in here that yeah. they'll be able to see this is how i loved your mom you oh know? my gosh so yeah so i'm trying to just fill this up and then eventually i'll get another bible and do the same thing and just hand them out. I don't know. I'll, bro. I plan to read as much of it as I can. Yeah. So, so we'll see. Yeah. I'm blessed by that, bro. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. That's big. absolutely man. And you know, one thing I really, um, felt gravitated towards you in this season was like, I'm a writer. So I do that, uh, on yeah. the side. I don't know if you know that that's kind of my, my, um, job where I make uh, my income is, uh, write speeches and podcast scripts and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. So, um, I saw you've been posting on your Instagram recently a lot of uh, posts that have been very like kingdom minded and like sharing your heart for the Lord and what like the Lord has been downloading onto you while yeah. you're in your own personal study. And Taylor, can we get that his Instagram up and just pull one up for an example so people can see? Um, and it's just like, what is your inspiration behind that? I know that it's been it's something that you've been very obedient about yeah. and it's been what he's called you to do. Uh, so just tell me what kind of led you to start doing that. Yeah. So um, really what it was, you know, I, I just had heard the Lord say, uh, go to the the, the marathon one if you don't mind. Maranatha. I'm wearing that shirt. I know that's too, why I'm right like, now. yo, go to go to that. Yeah. I see that. The, the, this is this is the heart cry of uh, should be the heart cry of every of every single worshiper of the bride. So I'm very, man. My the thing I love, as I told you before, is like the spirit and the bride. Like as a man, you know, uh, I think I think we see a lot of men in, in the church who aren't aren't as vulnerable. Tell me why you see women pouring out their their hearts at, at at the altar and are willing to cry and all this stuff but a lot of times the, the 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 men aren't always like that and i heard the lord say a few years ago he said i want you to be the bride and i'm like how do i do that mm -hmm. and he said i want you to look at your wife courtney and so over the past few years i've been going through that process of learning what it means to be the bride of christ which is really just learning how to be loved by him mm -hmm. and how to become vulnerable so being okay like I broke down on on stage like on platform uh maybe a month ago or so i was holding up my bible because I, I heard him say just just hold it up so i stopped playing which is weird for me i normally don't and i started bawling my eyes out like i never felt a weight like that uh there's i actually made a post on it on here um but yeah but this maranatha here man it's uh like i put on there we only need his presence so it's it's kind of getting the church into an idea of like lord maranatha means come lord jesus that's that's hebrew come okay. lord jesus i was gonna ask you yeah that's okay. what it means so um and as like on my shirt you see two rings yeah. it's the spirit and the bride so wow. it's, it's the marriage supper of the lamb and so as as the church our whenever we gather to worship it should always be a cry of like lord just come here yeah anything bro. else than that is to not invite us just as we were saying before like his you could do this podcast, but without his presence, it means nothing. There's no yeah. oil on it. Right. And it's like, whenever we gather to worship, um, you know, I don't want to like dog on like worship culture, but like 
worship has become such a, a it's a genre and God never intended worship to be a genre. Like wow. God on. never intended for us to, you know, have to have in order to worship, you have to have the the fancy lights, the, the smoke machine, the the production of it all. Like we can worship with those things and they can be an expression for for a creative to be like, man, I love doing lights. This is how I worship the Lord. Awesome, man. That's great. But if your motive behind it all is not come Lord Jesus, and it's just, let me just exercise an ability I have, then there's no oil on it, you know? And so anytime that I worship, um, that I'm coming for the Lord, uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's becoming harder for me to lead worship because I'm seeing how inadequate I am because of how holy he is. Mm. And so the only thing I can say is come Lord Jesus, like, can we be, can the church be okay singing that for 30 minutes? Right. But we, we can't, it'll make a lot of people uncomfortable to sing the same line for 30 minutes. But I mean, and the throne room, just like we were saying, they're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord almighty. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Those are the songs we're singing forever. Yeah. You know, so it's. Bro, while, um, while you say that, let me just stop you there. Because uh, this past Sunday at my uh, new church I've been attending called Thread in Cleburne, we just yeah. had the pastor uh, Alex Birkins on the last episode. Yeah. And at this past Sunday, actually, it was the it was Mother's Day. It was the first Sunday that my wife wanted to bring her family, or they were oh. able to come, you know, both in between. And they came through. And next thing you know, like the pastors over here, Alex Birkins, he's just preaching that raw and that truth of like, yo, like you have a hard time worshiping now. Like we're gonna be doing that in eternity. <laughs> like yep. you know, like he, he goes like, you're grumpy like this, like through worship now, yeah. but like in eternity, that's what we're gonna be doing. You know, so get used to it. You know. Yeah. And uh, one thing I were, like, me and my wife were just talking about this last night. Uh, uh, there's only two peeps up there. There's uh, my man Joe, who's on the keys. Yeah. Uh, who's also the, like the connections pastor there. And you've been the thread. I don't know why I'm talking like you haven't been. I'm no, it's totally good. Slipped it's my good. Mind. But it's for the listener, you know. Like, yeah, that's right. Uh, but they have Joe on the on the keys, and then they have Ki- they have Kylie, um, uh, um, vocalist. Yeah, yeah, the- vocalist up there. Who, uh, man, she has like the most purest voice. Awesome and, voice. And you know yeah. you, how you said uh, me and my wife were just talking about this last night. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, how you how you said like you know. Um, can we sing this one part for 30 minutes, you know, and whatnot? Like she is so cool because she doesn't, it's not a performance. It's her worshiping the Lord and it's so on her. You can see it. She's, yeah. she's not up front in the front of the stage, commanding the room, you know, like performing. Yeah. I've, I've seen her in the back surrender to his goodness. I've seen her like turn away from the crowd yes, to just be in man. it. I've seen her repeat the same line over and over again. And I just found out this about her and hopefully this is okay to be public knowledge. I'm sure it is because it's a, it's a testament <laughs> to, to the glory of God. She's like partially deaf and like she, wow, she over here has like Praise an, an, God. an anointing on her to, to give God glory through worship. Yep. And I'm just blown away by her, especially like I just keep finding out more about her. I'm like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get you on this show, girl, because yeah. like you were like a beast, you know. So yeah. uh, my wife and I are big fans of her, and it's not we're big fans of like just her voice. It's the way she worships. It's on her. You can tell. It's like yeah. inviting the Holy Spirit in. And Alex Birkins, our previous guest, was just such a big component of that. And that's what his church exists for. He says it's a house for the Lord. You're welcome here. Like Holy Spirit, come. Like it's such a big part of their of their entire being, and it's it's attractive. It, it makes yeah. you it makes you hungry it gives you that spark to be involved in that church again <laughs> yeah and um i'm just very excited about it and uh I've just yes, been, we've just been yeah. loving it and just really uh it feels like you know it's helpful to have you know leadership and like have worship leaders up there that are in that with you you know especially when you're in the pews you want that leadership to like yo bring the holy spirit in let's yeah. go i'm ready to get in it you know so it's been very powerful so i love that you're kind of yeah. in that same path especially as a recent because clearly the lord is doing something right now yeah. I feel like there's some things going on, and especially when you talk about holiness is what he's been really downloading onto you. Like, how much do we need that right now in this culture and yeah. in this world and in this in the in the body of Christ? I heard some today, very powerful. He said, "The my, my buddy Aaron Rock, I had breakfast with him this morning. He said that, um, you know, what's the worst kind of uh, violence right right now in America? Would you say? You know, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. He's like black on black, right? He's like, that's kind of the that's the truth. You know, there's not anything racist about it, but yeah. that's the truth about it. And then he said this. He's like, what's the worst kind of um, violence in the church? Or like, he didn't even word it that way. He just said, you know, another type of violence that is is at its strongest yeah. is Christian versus Christian. 
you know, kind of like throwing stones and judging and doing all these things of like trying to like divide us and not be unified in Christ, you know? So I love that. Like there's this, I feel like there's this hunger for purity. There's to be taught mm. and preached and the, the hungry for the presence of God to be there. And I'm just excited about it. Cause I know yeah, that man. like the Lord is shaking something up right now in the church. Oh, for sure, man. And you know, I, I tell my praise team, man, probably like every week, uh, I, I tell them the, the best way that we lead the church is just to minister to him. That's it. Right. Because, I mean, I, I may step on some toes That's saying okay. this, but the church is a place for his people to gather, not for them, but for him. But our the culture of, of Western Church, of the American church, has been so fixated on the people's comfort that we have forsaken his holiness. And you see that, I mean, you see the children of Israel doing it all the time where, you know, they, they just want what they want. They, 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 they want what's comfortable for them. So while Moses is on a mountain and they're like, well, this isn't comfortable. We're just going to do something that we're familiar with. We're going to make an idol on our own and have something to worship because we want something to worship now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they didn't value the holiness of the Lord. They, they didn't fear the Lord like they should have. And so whenever, okay, whenever we have, uh, you, you have worship leaders, worship pastors that um, like the, the Lord loves them. And, and, and I pray so much that there would be, I'm praying this frequently so much more, uh, more often now, but I'm like, Lord, just shift your church to truly fear you in a way that they, um, that they are drawn to repentance. Like repentance is such a gift. It, repentance is, the, is a gift that allows you to come back to him. Without repentance, you couldn't come back to the Lord. It's an invitation, would you say? Oh yeah, for sure. And so we need repentance in the church for, um, from, from leadership, you know, from pastors forming a ministry around them, for worship pastors making it more about a performance than his presence. And like it, it blows my mind that you'll have that we can have people in, in those leadership roles who, you know, I, I, I'm not saying you have to, you have to have this much knowledge to be qualified for that. Not, not by any means, you know, Moses didn't feel qualified, but he was surrendered. And part of that was that he had a fear of the Lord to be like, Lord, like, I'm just going to come before you. I'm whatever you want me to do. Like, don't, don't send us in the promised land without you. Like he was willing to forsake the promise just to have his presence. That's all he wanted. And, uh, and also look at what he did is he, Moses asked God for something that nobody else in, in biblical history up to that point had ever asked for. And I don't know of anyone else in, in the Bible who asked for it either, but he's the only one who said, Lord, show me your glory. Show me like that. Imagine how flattering that is to the Lord to be like, you want me so much that you want to see something that could potentially kill you. Wow. Like, man, Moses, I, I picked a good one, <laughs> you yeah. know? And so like, I think we just need more, we, we need more priests and, and less worship pastors, worship mm -hmm. leaders. We need people who are surrendered to the Lord. Um, we, we need people who are loving the word, you know, who are like, if we have worship pastors getting on platform who haven't spent a second in his word all week, like fear the Lord enough to say, I need a week off. Like Ooh. it's, it's, it's not bad for you to take, say, to just say like, Hey, I need, I need his presence. I can't minister to you, minister to the Lord out of an empty cup. And I can mimic the anointing and the people will feel like, Oh, I got, I've got oil, but I'm the one who's empty. Right. So, so yeah, there's just a, uh, the, the church just needs to see that whoever is up on stage is hungry for his presence and then they'll become hungry. Right. You know, and that's exactly what you're saying about the worship pastor over at thread too. Yeah. I mean, she's the same way. So, yeah. No, man, I love that. And I think, you know, it's like we're, we sometimes dance around these topics, you know, as yeah. far as like, you know, because we don't want to hurt, you know, our brother in Christ. We, you know, sure. we just talked about that as being, you know, Christian against Christian. But I do think there needs to be some accountability. And like, we need to understand that, like, that we are the way we are as a nation because it's supposed to be church and then, then culture. You know, church is supposed to be like the forefront of like what comes of our nation and what comes of our yeah. of our uh, society uh, but we haven't really seen that and experienced that in our lifetime right it's right. we've kind of got the tail end of seeing what that looks like and 
I think we're 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 seeing the passive wrath because of that from 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 the Lord. Yeah. Would you agree with that? As far as just like the, I feel like there's like birthing pains. I feel like there's like because we've turned our face or turned our backs against God. It's like we're seeing that, that kind of in society and seeing it in the culture of like the agendas and the the wickedness and all these things kind of take place because the church isn't that much separated from the world right now. It's almost like we got too yeah. ingrained into culture and we haven't, we've got too much into like the me, <laughs> the little God in me, like religion almost, you know, like yeah. I'm above, I'm above, or this is my platform. And even this man, like, I'll be real. Like I have a really, like, I have to give this to the Lord constantly. Cause I do, I have to surrender the ego. I have to like surrender. It's not about Zach. You know, I have to delicately balance the line of like, how much do I share about my personal life? Because like, I want it to be honored to him and about him and not be about me. You know, I don't want yeah. this to feel like it's a diary or a show of, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like you have to yeah. really surrender yourself to him in all things when it comes to to ministry, because it's not my ministry, it's his ministry. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, you know, I, I made a post on, a on, a on Instagram yesterday. Um, cause I, I have a photography, a, a real estate photography business that, um, that I'm running right now. And, um, I've just really heard the Lord say like, uh, to just give it right back to him. Everything I do, just give right back to him. And so I posted on there yesterday, like, you know, how do you steward, like start and then steward a kingdom business. And long story short, the, the way that you do that is just say, Lord, it'll never be mine. It'll always be yours. It's every day saying, God, I give this back to you. It's saying, Lord, I'm Abraham. I give you my Isaac every day. I give you my Isaac every day. Um, and it's, he, when whenever you do that, like, you're, you're not just showing him, you're really showing yourself like, Lord, I trust you. Lord, like, I only want you. I only want you. Your presence is all that, all that I want. Like anytime I'm going to shoot photos for, uh, for a house, you know, for, for a realtor, um, I'm praying for that realtor on the way up because I'm, I'm so in ground. I'm really trying to approach, approach it all. It's like, okay, Lord, I want this to be all for you, all about you. So how can I do that? Well, I can pray for this realtor on the way up there. I can pray while I'm in that house taking these photos. I, I can I can offer all, all of the realtors free breakfast and a Bible study and not to market myself, but just to give them the presence of the Lord. You know, um, if we have more kingdom things set up like that with a podcast, just like this man and saying, Lord, it belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. You know, at that point, he's like, great. Now abundance comes, you know, yes. now more listeners come because it's not in your strength, it's in his. And it's what's really, you know, interesting, just since we're talking about my business, um, two weeks ago, so I've been, I've been in the banking world for um, like the past, you know, seven, eight years. Um, and specifically the, the last two years was in mortgage. And, uh, we know we just seen a decline in the mortgage industry and stuff and no big deal. Um, two weeks ago, I lost my job and, uh, Honestly, like whenever I lost it, so me, me and David, we, we committed to one another, like, Hey, let's, let's go on a fast. And so we had planned for a fast, like a week out. We're like, okay, next week we're going to start a fast, start a fast on Monday. I get a call Monday morning at 11 AM, two weeks ago saying that I lost my job. And uh, they're like, just reduction in force. We're doing mass layoffs. I'm like, okay. And so, uh, get off the phone and, <laughs> and I, I, my wife walks in and she's like, so is everything okay? I'm like, I just lost my job. And I just, I just start laughing, you know? Uh, I mean, I cried later for sure. But, <laughs> but in that moment, I was like, I, I, I just started laughing and I'm like, I lost my job, you know? But it was in October of last year, I heard the Lord say, start doing real estate photography. Not even knowing. I'm like, why would I do that? I've never done photography. Um, I don't, I, I can learn how to do it, but I've never dabbled in it before. Lord, I, I don't know how to do all this stuff, how to get a business going, all this, whatever. But if you tell me to do it, you deserve my yes. I gave him my yes. And now um, I'm not having to go search out for another job. I'm just stepping into what he planted, you know, back in October, telling me to do so. Um, and what's what's great too is I, I started that fat, the same day I started that, that week long fast with David um, was whenever uh, the same day I lost my job. And I'm like, all right. My, I remember I had to go to work that an hour later, drop off all my stuff. And I'm, I'm, Jesus, walk, so I'm walking, I know <laughs> I was, it, it, it was, it was awkward. It's like a movie, you know, but, and I had my shades on cause I did not cause I was going to cry there, but I'm like, it's just awkward. I, I don't want people like, I was more so like, I don't want them to feel weird. Like 
because it kind of feels weird for me being here. Like, y'all just let me go. <laughs> and so I, uh, so anyway, so I, I walk in there and I hear the Lord say, like, take off your glasses because I want them to see the joy you have. Oh, wow. And so I'm like, okay. So uh, I, my boss, he meets me. He's like, man, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, you've been the best boss I've ever had. I'm like, I understand. I, I, I hugged my other boss. You know, I said, hey, thank you so much for everything. I walk out of that building, start bawling my eyes out because I would, on my lunches uh, for a year and a half there, you know, I would pray walking around that building. Oh, wow. And just giving that land. I said, Lord, this land doesn't belong to me, but I give it to you to make it holy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was going out of driving out. And I was bawling my eyes out. I'm like, Lord, I just pray that my, my prayers actually affected the land here. And uh, I'm not going to give the enemy my joy. Yeah. I'm like, I've done that too much in the past. So I'm going to deny my flesh as my fast is wanting me, is calling me to do. I'm denying my flesh and I'm just going to cling to joy. And so, uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to eat because I, you know, you lose a job, you have something bad happen. You're like, oh, crud. I want to just give me the blue bell or something. Just yeah. go gorge. But, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, that's how now I'm just going at my business with that. Wow. So, so you're, how, how, you're, uh, remind me again, how many weeks are you into it? Um, essentially the beginning of May. So beginning two May. and a half weeks now. Bro. So, um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've had one, I had one client I was specifically desiring, like, I want to win her business, win her business. I just I really respected her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she posted on, um, I did a few shoots, a few shoots for her. And then she posted on my Facebook telling all of her other realtors, she was like, Hey, he, he's won my business. I'm like, Oh God, you did it. You <laughs> yeah. did it. But I gave my business to him. Yeah. And so, and here's the thing, if the Lord takes it away. He takes it away because it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to him. Yeah. So no, it doesn't that, matter. And that's, I love that you chose, or that he chose it for you, but I love that you chose that niche of real estate because it's like, it's such a, a market where it's like, it's so plugged together where it's like the realtor community and everything is like so interconnected that I feel like it'll lead to opportunities like yeah. cons- consistently. It's like a really good place to like insert yourself into the photography realm. In my opinion, I don't know oh, much yeah. about it, but I would say that that's it. Cause I even started doing like, um, promoting that I, I write like uh, real estate listing descriptions. And I found that like, there's a, there was like a, a, a market for it. You know what I mean? There was like yeah. a, a demand for it just by putting out a little flyer about it. You know what I mean? And working with a couple of people that recommended me and then boom, you know, next thing you know, you have a handful of clients just doing that. You know what I mean? So it's, it's cool that you're, you're a part of that. And I feel like you've already done great work. The fact I saw the drone video you posted yesterday about that yeah. church, like the fact that you're getting yeah. into the drone space, like you have a lot to offer people. And like the fact that it is God's, you know, business and he's the CEO, like it's going to be blessed big time. You know, yeah. you're just getting the groundwork started. And obviously that door had to shut for you to take up this, yeah. this uh, brand new door to open. But like the fact that it's open so quickly for you, it's like, mm-hmm. obviously it's smooth and it's, yeah. and it's clean and the fact that you were praying over that spot and you're so well loved at your last spot, that means like, oh, okay, God has something even bigger in store for you. And yeah. you're, you're 30 years old, bro. Like, I know, life, man. life is going to be good. Like, oh, yeah. Come I'm, on, I'm not worried at all. And, and you know, while we were at Thread that one day that I saw you at church, um, I'm in the back and, 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 and Pastor Alex is preaching on. I, I remember him saying, he's like, uh, you know, to, to make sure that you, you have, have an ability, like, you know, it felt so so to me at that moment because I'm like, man, Lord, I've been, I, I got an ability through photography. Like, I didn't know I had it, but I started stewarding that. And and Lord, I'm so glad that I did it because I really needed it right now, you know. And and I heard the Lord say to me while I was sitting in the back, um, I, I heard him say, Kenneth, what if you didn't, what if the enemy didn't take away your job? What if I did? And I, I just totally shifted my perspective. So I'm not looking at it like the enemy did anything to me because I'm not going to give him the time of day or the credit for that. I'm saying, Lord, you're, you are just positioning me for what you want me to do. For sure. And uh, like, for example, I, I have my editors are, uh, are in Vietnam. Uh, in, this, in this business, that's just kind of the way it is. You get a lot of overseas, uh, overseas editors and stuff. And so um, it's very economical, low price for me, but great for them, you know. And uh, I'm the same on Fiverr, bro. My video editor is uh, not from USA. There you go. There <laughs> you go. And uh, I heard the Lord tell me yesterday I was, as I was leaving one of my shoots, um, he was telling me, he's like, you have an opportunity to go to the nations because of this business. I'm like, I'm like, Lord, I have a passport. I could fly out there. I could ask them, how can I pray for you guys today? You know, yeah. I could, what can we do in Vietnam, Lord? Right. So anyways, the, yeah, the, the doors are, it's just whatever he wants to do. So I'm just like, Lord, I just want to be a good steward of your business. Um, and that goes right into Pastor Alex's uh, message know, that day. It's all connecting, dude. Like, isn't it that is. crazy? It is. Yeah, man, we've been we've been really like, 
I don't know. I feel like God's just been moving big time in our lives right now with with the new blessing of the church and just the messages that have been preached there and just seeing just the fruit of it, bro. You know, yep. it's like attractive. You know, I love when you can just feel like it's ordained by God, like you know it's just natural, you know, and like, yeah, man, it's just cool. It's just cool the way God moves and operates, you know, on yep. behalf of the believers in the church. And, you know, for somebody that loses their job, you know, uh, we've had a lot of, I, I, at Calvary, I went to Man's Night uh, last month, which is kind of like a whole bunch of guys get there and they get dinner and there's a message and yeah. kind of fellowship and stuff at uh, the church I attended for five years, which I still am connected with as well and love very much. Um, but I went there and it was cool because um, a lot of people there actually at the time, a lot of men were actually experiencing layoffs as well. I mean, we're going to be seeing it left and right. You know, yeah. if it hasn't hit you yet, it might hit you, sure, you know, because yeah. uh, the economy is kind of trash. Uh, they don't tell you that on the news because, <laughs> no, they you know, don't. they don't want you to vote the other <laughs> way. But uh, the truth is, you know, we're on the brick. Of, we might yeah. already be in a recession. You know, it's just they're able to skew the data and, yeah. and all that stuff. So. But we could go down that rabbit hole, but we'll choose not to. <laughs> uh, but anyway, a lot of people are experiencing job loss. And, you know, when you're a believer, I, I I don't know, for some reason, and maybe this is just strong faith, it's like I've seen in my own life, in my own experiences that, like, when that door closes, it's because God wants it closed and he has something for you. He's He's good. He's not going to just let you fall on your face and just stay there and you know what i mean yeah. unless that's his will and is also for your good you know yep. bible says paul says in romans that all things work out for the the goodness of christians you know he didn't say yeah. it like that you know i'm not great at the whole like exact thing but no, that was like right. that was emphasis you know yeah. it's like just just so you know it's the rippy translation it's exactly you know <laughs> which there will probably be a translation of that coming you know there you go you know jesus was dope yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> i feel like that's whenever i read the message you know <laughs> Like, so I can read King James and like, thus says the Lord. And then the message is like, yeah, and then my dog, Jesus, came out and said all this sort of stuff. So, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, the message is wild, bro. It is, dude. Yeah, The message is. is a lot. And sometimes like uh, at, at, at church, I've seen them put like a message, um, like Bible verse on the screen. And I'm like, dang, they're trying to really reach people today. They are. <laughs> they're trying to really get the new believer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Oh, but... uh good uh but yeah so if a door closes like god definitely has one open for you and it's yeah. like lean into him you know trust him go on yeah. the fast pray seek his face um uh, i just talked to um aaron i was telling you uh, about that i had a breakfast with today and he was talking about like have you ever just took a day to like think about your business and like ponder your business and like reflect on it or are you just busy work 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 you know have you given god the time to speak to you uh, speak to you and through you on those days of rest and stuff like that, you know? So yeah. it's kind of an interesting perspective of like, man, take some time off, like see what God, because God, man, we were, I was talking to Taylor about this um, pre-show. I was talking about like, man, God's just been downloading ideas on me for like the show and for the ministry and for like what we're doing, you know? It's just like, it all comes from him. And we always want to give credit to the enemy for like, oh, that's not my thoughts. That's the enemy's thoughts. But it's like, when do we ever give credit for God's thoughts that he puts yeah. on you? You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, Every good idea, I think, is is from God. You know what I mean? Because He's the one that created imagination, created creativity. You know, yeah. so like I've been really leaning into that and being like, "Yo, Lord, I receive everything you want to put on me and give me the idea for." Like, I'll lean into it if you want me to. You know, yeah. so it's been really cool to see the fruit yeah. of that. Absolutely, yeah. one of the key elements of uh, of God. Well, I'll say this: one of His characteristics, the first characteristics that's mentioned of God in Bible is creativity, because says in the beginning God created. Right, and so. If we're made in his image, he's given us that same character trait, that same part of himself, that creativity. And so, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to, man, you're just going to see that. That's of be able to start birthing out of this ministry. And I was praying for this ministry on the way up here. Oh, thank you. And man. I was just like, you know, Lord, I, I just, I just pray that, that there would be an increase of listeners, not, not to, to bring glory to you. Cause I know you're not like that. Um, but to bring glory to, to you, father, you know, um, cause we, 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 we need more people to be able to more kingdom minded people to give everything over to the Lord and just say, Lord, you just do what you want to with it. If I have one subscriber and that's all you wanted, then that's, then it's your business, Lord. That's what you wanted. Mm -hmm. If it's a million subscribers, praise God, Lord, you get the glory for it no matter what. Right. So it's, um, yeah, there's going to be amazing things coming out of, out of this ministry. I just, I really felt that on the way up here Ooh. and I'm not, and I'm not just saying that just because my first time on either. I just, you know, I, I just really felt the Lord just just say like, man, Kent, there's there's something special about what's happening, what's happening here. And the people you're going to bring in this room, 
man, they're, they're going to walk in into this place. I'm just going to prophetically say this over you right now, man. They're going to walk in through these doors back here and they're just going to feel a shift in the atmosphere mm -hmm. automatically. They're going to feel a shift. They're going to sense something. There's going to be like, what is different about this place? Wait, this isn't a church. Oh, it's a business and his presence is here. So they're just going to feel the presence of God so thick in this, in this room. Man, I just feel it on me. I just like, it's coming down over my head right now. And, uh, Man, they're, they're going to be so overjoyed, overwhelmed in a good way with this presence. And uh, you're going to just see, I, I just almost see you just being able to look at the other person across the table and you're going to, you're just kind of revelation poured out on you to see what the spirit's doing. And as they're talking, you're going to be like, oh Lord, you've got them right now. Yeah. You're, you're, I see you <laughs> on them. So yeah. So Ooh. it's going to be cool, man. Well, thank you, man. I received and uh, I really appreciate that pray prayer going up uh, for us. And uh, I believe what you're saying is coming to, coming to pass soon when, when he knows that we're ready for it. Me and Taylor yeah. were talking about a pre-show as well of like, man, we're doing some big things. It's exciting. And uh, when you talk about the subscriber base and stuff like that, uh, we do what we do for the one, you know, the one listening yeah. that could turn to God and even the one as far as the one I am, you know, like we do it for him. You know, it's kind yes. of a double meaning yeah. when I say we do it for the one, um, which is, I think, very telling as, as to like what our vision is, you know. Mm. Um, but we will say that, like, you know, when we don't have the influx of listeners, that uh, about an episode that we're excited about. You know, I was really excited. I released the Alex Birkins episode yesterday and he's just been really pouring into me. So like getting him on the show was just an honor. You know, it's just yeah, felt sure. like a big fish in my eyes because I've just been really enjoying um, his, his leadership and just yeah. his preaching. So being able to talk to him like that for an hour and a half about Jesus, I was geeking uh, out, bro. I was just like, ooh, this is so yeah. fun. You know, I just loved it, you know? And I was so excited about it, released the episode. And like, I released it Wednesday morning, you know, like not the greatest time, but also I was so excited about launch day about it, you know? Sure. And you don't see the numbers come in like th that matches your excitement. But then I just started thinking like, that's going to come, you know, like people yeah. are going to get the clips. They're going to see it. They're going to see like, oh man, I got to check out what he's talking about. And like, they're going to come through and you're going to send people, Lord. Like I have to stop worrying about that. Uh, but I do know that like, what is, what is happening on this show and the, just the guests that we have, like I get filled up just from sitting across from somebody. Yeah. So I know that somebody that's out there that's listening is getting filled up. They're getting inspired to getting more faith. The Holy Spirit is, you know, saying something to talking to them in the car while they're yeah. driving home from work or something. They're, they're, they're more so, you know, pursuing righteousness and holiness and purity because of it. Like there's so much that's happening probably in the hearts of people listening that I don't even see that I'll never see, you know, yeah. and, you know, I'll get a message from time to time, but that's still not seeing the heart, you know, that's still not seeing what's transforming within them. And, but I know that this is going to turn into something big. Like I know yeah. that he, he doesn't, he's a God of abundance. He's not going to take, it's already the way it's shifted and transpired and moved and evolved. Yeah. It's already been big. Like we're on year three. Like it takes five yeah. years for a business to do, 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 do you know, that whole yeah. saying or whatever to become successful. But I know that there's going to be, it's going to be something that's going to be unique it's going to be something that's that people know about it's going to be a blessing to the people i do think it's going to be bigger numbers coming in yeah. because people have to see like what what we're doing here because of it, it is honoring to god and yeah. we need more ministries in the space in the online space you know i feel like online has been very you know enemy driven for so long with this yeah just the, the worldliness and stuff like that and not to say that there isn't some good out there of course there is but i do feel like we need to insert ourselves into those space because the gospel has to transcend the gospel has to go to all ends of, ends of the earth right yeah how are we going to do that if it, if the gospel is not online right now you know what i mean so the gospel yeah. has to be out there and much respect to everybody that you know has big channels and is doing great things for the kingdom and we'll be there soon but right now i love where we're at i love talking to people in the community i love yeah. meeting somebody and being like bro like mm. I got to get you on the pod, you know? Yeah. So uh, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. And I really appreciate you giving me that word and I receive and uh, yeah. thank you for praying for us, bro. Big yeah, time. man, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just one of those things like the, 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 the key to success in the kingdom is just obedience. Right. And as long as you can be obedient with every single podcast episode, you know, with, with, with every single word that, that you write out for whatever you're doing, uh, you know, on, on other things, as long as you can just be obedient, you'll be successful. And, you know, whenever I just heard you say, you know, it, you know, it's, it's said out there, it takes anywhere from up to five years for your, for your, whatever you're doing, your business or whatever to become really thriving. I just heard the Lord say like, who told you Ooh. it has to be five years. Very similar to whenever, uh, God tells Adam, who told you that you were naked? Ooh. It's like, so, okay. I'm just going to speak, I, I'm going to speak, go. speak Come this on. over you again, man. I'm going to like, 
whatever has told you that it's going to take this long, the God can do that in the suddenly, just like Pastor Alex. I know he's been speaking Ooh. on that, that. That's his word. And you're under that covering. Uh, so, man, it, it can be a suddenly thing. It can be a suddenly thing. So anytime that 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 I'm just going to call it a lie. Mm-hmm. Don't don't believe the lie. Okay. It, it, it can happen tomorrow. Hey. You, you can have the just, you can have the right person that the Lord brings along. And they're like, oh, man, there's this guy named Rippy on this podcast. Okay, there's something there's something on him, yeah. you know. So yeah, and then boom, blows it up just just blows by sharing it, it or something, you know. Yeah, like, that's it. That's, that's it. all it takes, man. It only takes one one thing to happen before next thing you know, you're you're in a new season where God yeah. wants you at, you know. So and that's the suddenly, bro. Yeah, that's the suddenly. Dude. That's it, man. Yeah. I love that, man. I received that. That was good. You yeah, know that, Taylor. <laughs> you receiving that too? <laughs> my boy, me and my boy Taylor, we talk a lot about we're in this, we're in the same like freelancing space as far yeah. as like you know doing our own thing, and we talk a lot about just like growth and opportunity and just like what's out there and like what the Lord has in store. And we try to really just like, you know, feed off each other's ideas. And um, I just I just love the people that God's like put in, in my life mm-hmm. since we came into the studio. I feel like I poured so much of like time and energy and effort into like really, you know, um, leaning in the community more than I have in the, yeah. in, in the first two years that we did this show. And it's not just because like, oh, we, we need guests, you know, or anything like that. It's more yeah. so just like God wants me to be more like out in, in the world now. The first few years, he was really like, honing on that character you know really mm-hmm. just getting some things out of me that's you know? most important yeah so yeah. like refining me there and like you know making sure my family was good before i could be set set out and stuff so we're in the house yeah. now um we're off the road we're in the rv for a while so it's kind of cool to just see like yo we, we're putting down some roots there you go uh, and we're just man we're just so excited Praise about God. it so and i know you you um you and your wife courtney y'all do a podcast together uh that you started yeah um at our table it's at, at our table what is our called? table our yes, table sir. yep yep and you guys talk a lot about faith and uh, y'all's lives and fatherhood and motherhood. And yeah. uh, you guys are starting a new season of that soon. Yeah. So we, uh, we, we actually started that, man, I think it was like a year ago or so. Um, we, we had left, uh, what's really cool. The church that we're at now, which is the uprising, um, uh, which pastor Gary Birkins, which is Alex Birkins dad. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Small pretty world, cool. Dude. It is, man. It is. <laughs> uh, pastor Gary, shout out to you, man. I love you so much. You are amazing, bro. So, um, I've heard we, that a lot. Yeah, he is. He's so good, man. Like he, he encompasses the, you know, you have the, the Godhead, he encompasses the father so well, so well. And, and that's the best thing about him. Best thing about him. Um, but we had left our last church, spent three months, and then we joined the uprising in that last church that we left, that building. We're actually back in that building as the uprising now. And so it's pretty cool how the Whoa. Lord has just brought us back to the place that we left. And uh, um, so amazing to get my old church family back and stuff and with my new church family and all of it joins. But I say all that because whenever we had left, uh, I had heard the Lord say, like, start a podcast, like begin exercising your voice. Mm. Because I feel like the Lord has has, uh, has really put a call on me to. There's something specific about my voice, and I don't say that pridefully. I just, I'm most insecure about my speaking. Most insecure about my speaking. Really? Yeah. You, you're you're kind of smooth with no, it, though. No, no, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's. I've become much more confident in it in in the past year, and that really started with us starting the podcast, and um. I heard the Lord say, like, it'll be an opportunity for you and your wife to exercise your voice. And sure enough, like, my wife, man, she, her name is Courtney, most beautiful woman on the planet, um, has an amazing heart for the Lord. Uh, she she took a month and a half off from the platform just because she felt like the she was putting um, other things before him. She's like, I got to just take myself off. She's like, don't schedule me for until I tell you, until the Lord tells me to come back. That's big. She, she fears the Lord. Praise God for my wife who fears the Lord. Um, but we had started that podcast and uh, her ability to speak has only increased, you know, this co- kind of conversation we're having here. I feel like me and her have conversations like, like this every single night. Like we'll, wow. we'll, we'll, we'll put on TV and we'll start watching something and then I'll pause it and be like, Hey, so I've meant to tell you, I was, I read this thing today. And then two hours later, like, man, we, we can't get th- through this episode of The Voice we've been trying to watch for the past three nights. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but we started the podcast, and so there's a lot of stuff we, we've we shared on there. There's some songs that we've written that we've put on there. Um, and just begin, again, just trying to exercise the voice that God's put in us. Uh, we talk a lot about a lot about just faith as, as a father, as a mother. Um, we talk some testimonies, like there's an episode on there about 
Um, like Courtney, her and I dealt with it, with infertility for uh, the beginning part of our marriage when she was told that she wouldn't have kids. And uh, now we're about to have our third. So Praise God. I mean, come Yo, on. Yo, come right? on. Hey, let's stay there for a second. Yeah. So if somebody out there is listening and they're struggling with like infertility, like what are some, because you've been through that yeah. with your family, what are some words of wisdom you would give them? You know, the 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 thing that really shifted it for um, for my wife, I'll kind of speak on, on behalf of her right now. Um, the thing that shifted for her is whenever she finally told the Lord, she said, Lord, if you never give me a child, it was the prayer of Hannah, you know, from, from first Samuel, bro. Let's go. <laughs> we connected. <laughs> she, she said, Lord, if you never give me a child, like, you know, that I, it, it, it's fine. I, I just want you. But if you give me a child, I'll give them right back to you. And, um, the moment that she did that, you know, there was a joy that came upon my wife. Whenever the burden of worrying about having to have, like, Lord, I got it, it was really just striving. Like, Lord, we 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 want a child so bad. We want to be father a father and a mother. And we had just done foster care, foster to adopt. Um, you know, we were told that we were going to adopt these kids, and man, I fell in love with these kids from the day that I met them, and. Uh, I was bawling my eyes out every day for three months thinking like, Lord, what if you take them away? And then they ended up going back to their, uh, to their family, which, you know, reunification is the main process of that. So I've just had to surrender that to the Lord. And, uh, and she told me, I remember her saying like, you are now experiencing because how broken I was once my, once I almost said my kids, but like once my foster kids had left, um, she said, what you're experiencing is what I've been feeling for the past three years, not being able to get pregnant. She's like, I think now you you understand. And I'll, and that put it in a whole new perspective for me because I had to lose something to where she had been desiring it the entire time. But again, once she just kind of gave it to the Lord, um, which is around the same month that my foster kids, our foster kids were taken, taken back, um, she gave that to the Lord, and then we conceived that month, that month. Oh, my gosh. It was, it was amazing. Response. So, yeah, she uh, – and our first – our oldest son, his name is Samuel. That's that's it, man. So he, the prophet, bro. So he's uh, uh he is, uh, man. It's, it's so much of a miracle. I mean, every child is, and but whenever you're told you can't have kids, and then you, man, you just stick it to the enemy, and you're like, ha ha ha. Like, right. I'm having my third. You know, it's uh, it's an amazing legacy to have, and. <clears throat> I'm just so excited to to be able to to experience this, and so to just bring encouragement. If there's anyone who's struggling with infertility, um, you know, you've heard heard me maybe say some of the stuff about the, my my business and just everything of, of of my life. But if you just give it all to the Lord, you know, you're gonna. How do you do that? Would you say is it prayer? Is it taking that worry off of you? Is it trying to lose the grip of control that you think you have yeah. on it? Yeah, I think so. I, I think there's so much of us that we just desire to to operate in our own strength. Like we almost did IVF to like try to force it. And I'll say like, yeah, like force God's hand. And mm. But we, we felt convicted that like, Lord, we feel like we're trying to play God right now and trying to make something like, what if you're just not ready to give us a child yet? And so, I mean, it's, it's, it, it is so, it, it is so hard. It's difficult, but it just, there has to be through that journey, through that process, you just have to say, Lord, like this is much too heavy for me to carry anymore. Like, right. and I know that you can carry it so much better. So Lord, it is still my dream. And I'll just, I speak over every person struggling with infertility. Don't give up on the dream. You know, God says, be fruitful and multiply. So there is a, there is a promise from him and a command. So lean into that promise and say, Lord, you're going to give us, you're going to give us a child. And the way that we brought that prophetically into our lives is we got the baby room ready. We, we went ahead and we bought the crib. We went ahead and we painted the room. Well, my in-laws painted the room. Uh, they painted it the uh, toy story, Andy's room with all the, the clouds on it and stuff. Um, but yeah, we got the dresser. We got the clothes. We got, we got all of it. Cause we said, Lord, you're going to give us a child because that's the dream. And, um, and you, People may say, oh, you're preaching prosperity gospel. I'm like, it's not prosperity when the Lord promised it to me. It's not prosperity whenever it's out of his mouth. I'm like, I'm just calling forth and enacting on what God already has promised me. Because if we were pregnant, 
we would already be getting this stuff anyways. Yeah. So what if I just prophetically go ahead and start getting the room ready? So if you want to know, get the room ready. And that, I know we keep talking about thread, but whenever seeing O barren woman, what Pastor Alex has been preaching on lately, seeing O barren woman, you who never bore a child, because more are the children of the desolate than the one who has a husband. That was what we came under. And it says, and it says in there, his whole thing with the tent pegs, right? Yeah. It says, extend your tent pegs out. So enlarge in your house, get the room ready. And that's why we did it because of that passage right there. Oh my gosh. And bro. then we, because we just prophetically, when we just said, Lord, we're just going to step in under what you've already called, even though we can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. So Lord, we're just going to come into alignment with it. And we're just going to believe and pray and just give it to you. You just take the heavy lifting. And once you took the heavy lifting, man, we were able to start laughing, just have joy. And then, uh, the day that we she took a pregnancy test, it was a, it was December sixth. I'll never forget that more. I was getting ready for work on a Friday. I'm in the the spare bathroom trying to get ready not to wake her up. She I hear the door rumbling through. She throws open the curtain while I'm showering and I'm feeling all insecure. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and she sticks a pregnancy test in my face and she says, Look at it. And for three days straight, we could all we could do is laugh. All oh we could do is laugh. So yeah, Praise it's God. Uh, it is it's an uh, it's an amazing thing. So yeah, and, and again, we're having our third child Good Lord. Uh, here in August. So, bro. So yeah. Okay. So the reason I asked you that, and we stayed there, which I am glad we did, because yeah. that was beautiful, bro. Uh, I think that was the first time I've gotten emotional on this show, like mm. in a, in a minute since uh, at least in the studio. Because wow. Anyway, so. Yeah, man, I love that you prepared the room. And that's something that kind of represents like faith without works is dead, essentially. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of a, it, there can probably be some layers to that, uh, of course. Um, and I encourage my my close friend, um, they've, you know, they've been trying and, um, you know, we've been praying over them, praying over them. And I, I, I encouraged him one day, I was like, go buy a onesie or something, yeah. you know, like start putting that's some it. things that that's it's coming, it. you know, go yeah. buy a baby onesie. I don't know how you feel about it, but the Lord wanted me to share that with you. Like go buy yeah. a onesie. Tell me how I shared that with him. And then the Lord gave me a dream and he does <laughs> not give me dreams very yeah. often, you yeah. know, gave me a beautiful <laughs> dream, bro. Of like me in the mall in Florida where, where my best friend lives and where we're from. And I'm over here in this mall and I'm looking for him. There's like little middle kiosk. I'm looking for my friend and then got like the Holy Spirit whispers in the dream, like go to the back right of the mall or whatever. I go to the back right of the mall. I find my friend and he's pushing a baby stroller. And I just, I get so like, I'm so blown away in this dream. And I look at this little boy and it looks just like him in like a Mm. cute little baby version. It is my best friend since forever you know so look just like a little version of him and i just start like i wake up so excited to like share this Mm -hmm. news with my friend that it's coming it's around the corner and and the lord is faithful and he's been really leaning into like he came and visited in march uh we did episode together um and we uh and he he's been since that time he came here it's like he got refired up for the lord's been watching the chosen has his bible out while he's watching the chosen he has yeah. friends at work now that are believers like god's been really touching on him and i do feel like a lot of it had to do with like yo let's get get right with god and then it'll come you know what i mean or yep. like sure. you know give that to him and and he he even tells me he's like yeah i'm learning how to surrender it and all that stuff so like um, I love that you shared that, bro, because I know that yeah. there's other people out there. That's just one I'll name, you know, but because uh, he'll be okay with it. Um, but I know other people are going to be really blessed by your story with that because yeah. that's that's huge. And like we we need to speak on those things to give, to give encouragement because that's something that a lot of people are probably battling that yeah. we don't know behind closed doors. Yeah. And I can't even speak from that place, but I can't imagine like trying to in a marriage how frustrating that could be mm. and how you know, when you, that, that moment of intimacy happens, is it happening because of the love or is it yeah. happening because, oh, I'm ovulating. Let's, let's get after it today. Yeah. And that can, it can lose its, you know, design of what, what sex and a marriage can be like. Yep. And, yeah. and, and I know that's probably got to be a struggle. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, because again, it puts the whole aspect of striving into place and that's what the Lord was wanting to relieve us from, especially my wife, you know, cause she's being the one told that she's not going to be able to get pregnant, all these things. Um, or, and the only glimmer of hope they ever gave us was saying, if, if you're able to get pregnant, it's going to be extremely difficult. I'm like, well, thanks. Like, you know, for me during that process, I feel like the Lord like so balanced us out. I just, I just had a knowing I'm like, while she is just, you know, just really struggling through it. 
I just, you know, um, for me, I just wasn't sweating it because I was like, Lord, I just, I don't know. I just know you're, you're just going to give us a child. It's just, I just know you're going to, I know you're going to. And I think a lot of times what, what we can do is, you know, if we try to rush the promise of God, then we have, you know, premature labor, you know, and, you know, no, no one desires to have premature labor with a child because the health of that child is at risk. You know, you, you want it to take the whole nine months. You, yeah. you want the Lord to develop that child. So, you know, once my wife began to really just kind of lean in and she was like, I don't want to rush the promise of God. So I'm just going to give him his promise back. And wow. again, again, that's, that's the Abraham, the Abraham way. Like, Lord, I just give you, I give you my son. If, if you're telling me to sacrifice him, I'll sacrifice this promise. It makes no sense because you've promised me mm -hmm. that generations will come. And David and I were talking about this today. And I'm like, you know, if you go read in Hebrews, um, it's Hebrews 11. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll give you the, 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 the rippy translation, <laughs> <laughs> rippy translation. But you know, it basically says in there towards the end, how, how Abraham, uh, was so it's the, the hall of faith chapter we hear. Yeah. And he says, uh, you know, Abraham was going to sacrifice his son, and uh, but he knew that the promise would still be fulfilled. Essentially, there was some some of that context, and is it was basically saying how Abraham knew that he, he went past his intellect and went straight into faith because he was like, "Look, the Lord is going to be able to." Um, he's telling me to sacrifice my kid, which goes against everything he's told me that he would promise me. And that goes against God's nature in my flesh. I feel like that goes against God's nature. But he believed, there's context in that passage where it says he believed in for a resurrection to happen. Mm -hmm. And tell me how he can believe in something that is not recorded in biblical history yet. Right. I'm it's like, just been straight from, straight from the source. Yeah. And he's just like, I just believe like the Lord will raise my son from the dead, essentially. Like that's that's what's happening with Abraham. And I'm like, there's nowhere like... You know, I mean, we're just in, in Genesis and no place has that happened. No resurrection. Yeah. Nowhere yet. And so the fact that he is basically trusting the Lord's going to raise my son from the dead, not only brings life into your promise, but it, it speaks directly into Jesus. I can see that with the lens of seeing where Jesus, where are you at in this passage? Oh, you're going to raise a dead thing. Oh, yeah. you're going to raise from the dead. You know, so it's, yeah. Dude, it's let me cool. read the um, non rippy translation because yeah. I, I found it and I, I, I want to share it with the people because I you remember go. this episode, this, um, this chapter led me to do an episode called Hall of Faith back in the day when there we were go. just audio only. And it just really touched me because it made me see like, oh, I, I want to be like one of these people in the Hall of Faith. So like I need, sure, to, yeah. I need to level up. So <laughs> it was kind of one of those level episodes. Uh, so it says in uh, 11 verse 8, uh, it says uh, in Hebrews, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out, even though he did not know where he was going, but by faith he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise, living in the tents as did Isaac and Jacob, co co-heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Mm -hmm. And then also it says over here in verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Come on. He received the promises, and yet he was offering his one and only son, the one to whom it had been said, your offspring will be traced through Isaac. Yep. He considered God to be able to uh, be able even to raise someone from the dead. Therefore, he received him back, figuratively speaking. By faith, I, uh, okay, then we go on to Isaac and stuff like yeah. that. But boom. Sorry, I read the first one, but uh, no, that's you know, good. We got that's the full there. story now. We got you the got full it. faith of Isaac in the or um, of Abraham in the beginning during you know yeah. the first promise, and then we got the faith of of uh, when he was trying to sacrifice you know his son because he was being obedient to God. Uh, he believed that he can raise him from the dead. I don't think I I, I kind of had that mm -hmm. in my knowledge right now of like how in, incredible that is without knowing anything else really about God, mm -hmm. but believed in God's power to raise. His son that they've been praying for for years, right? Yeah. That, that they've been kind of w longing for to have a son, and then mm -hmm. boom. Yeah, yeah. God gave Abraham and Sarah the promise whenever he was like seventy-five. Yeah, and it wasn't until Abraham was like a hundred, right, that that came through. They tried to force the hand of God and created an Ishmael, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and which I mean, there, there's some really great redemptive stuff for for Hagar in that passage too. But anyways, but there's, um. But yeah, but the Lord's promise still didn't even change, even though that they tried taking it into their own hands. And so, you know, his promises are yes and amen. 
in him is the yes, and in us the amen, we co-labor with that amen. We say, mm-hmm. God, you said yes to this. I say amen to it. Okay, right. it's done. It's done. And and the thing is, I think we're just stuck on a timeline, but we have God who operates outside of time. That's right. So God is able to see everything in, in a perspective that we are limited to because we are in time. And so if he says it's done, right? If he, whenever Christ died on the cross, like it is finished, like it was, it is finished for eternity, right? Amen. He wasn't just speaking for that day. It wasn't just that the work was finished, but the salvation and uh, access into the, in, in, into the Holy of Holies, it's all done. There is access for us 2000 years later to get into, uh, get into the Holy of Holies. And so with every promise he gives, if he's like, you're going to have a child, um, you know, just because you don't see it in time yet does not mean it's not true. It's just God is already seeing it. And, and it says in Ephesians that we are seated in the heavenly places. So whenever I position myself next to him, I take myself out of time and I'm like, oh God, I see exactly the same promise you're seeing. It's going to happen there. Okay, put me back. And then you wait and you get to that point. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I know it's really hard to really envision, okay, but I don't know when God's going to give me the promise. You know, it may be, it may be nine months, it may be 10 years whatever. doesn't matter. The promise doesn't change. So it's just, if I can be seated in the heavenly places with him and I gain his perspective, you know, th- that is where, where we are positioned, heavenly places at his table. And we just get to, we just get to see it from his, perspe- his perspective. So it's a beautiful sight, man. So. Isn't it so good to be non-lukewarm? Oh yeah. And be, <laughs> yeah. be close to him and like knowing that his promises are coming past in your life and like mm-hmm. living that way and believing that way and seeking righteousness and seeking the holiness of Christ and just wanting to be, learn more about him and being hungry. Yeah. Have you experienced lukewarmness before and to see the difference of where you are now versus where mm-hmm. you were then? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, I've had it a, f- a few times in my life, probably in, in the last, I haven't experienced it as much in the last, um, maybe like four or five years, I've just been really, dil- I've just done my best to make sure like I daily encounter the Lord, you know, as much as I can. Um, I'm always talking about the Lord if it's with my wife at night or whatever, you know, just something. But I've had, see, I definitely have, probably the longest season I had um, uh, in, in 2013, my, my sister was murdered. So I have, I'm one of four siblings. So I have my oldest, and then Casey, she, she's the one who had passed me and then my youngest sister. And um, so she was murdered at 23. And I didn't necessarily stop my relationship with the Lord. Like, I remember whenever we found out, you know, the, the officer came to our house and told us what happened. Um, you know, what was really difficult during that time is I was not on speaking terms with my sister. And so... Uh, I, I had one opportunity, thank God for my mom. She she texts both of us saying, y'all need to work this stuff out because your little sister's starting to see. And so I text her saying, hey, I love you, but I'm mad about this decision, This all this stuff that's hurting, I feel is hurting our family. And she reciprocated uh, to say that she loved me too. But uh, that's the only thing I really got. And then she, she uh, was murdered. And so um, I remember officer comes, tells us, you know, I'm just it all piled on me, man. And and everyone, I I feel like the whole church of like 300 people was in my, you know, 1400 square foot home at that point. And everyone knew about my relationship with my sister was, was, uh, was hurting. And I literally felt like all eyes were on me. And I just started weeping, man, just bawling my eyes out. Cause I'm like, I lost the opportunity. Like, you know, I, I thought not talking to her would actually change what she was doing. And the only thing it's done is it's left me empty. And I told God afterwards, I said, Lord, I'm not mad at the person who murdered her right now. I just want my sister back. You know, I just want her back, which I knew was like, at that point, it's just not, 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 was not going to happen. And so I spent, you know, probably, um, it was my, it, I was in college. My, that was my first year of college. And, uh, I, you know, my, my parents, they ended up splitting up after 25 years, six months or so later. Um, and I was, I was lukewarm for two years after that, not knowing I was lukewarm though. Mm -hmm. Like I was, um, I just wasn't pursuing the Lord. I I was stagnant water. I was not a river. I was stagnant water, had no idea. I wasn't mad at God necessarily. There were times where I was kind of frustrated, but it was more so like, you know, I just, Lord, I'm just going to 
do my own thing, you know. If you want to work in other people, that's great, you know, whatever. So I wasn't really going to church, and then one day the Lord just showed up, and he said, it's time for you to pick up your mat and walk. And, uh, mm. I mean, he just showed up in the passenger seat of my truck and spoke that to me. I'm like, okay. And then within a week I was talking to a pastor who had been asking me to come lead worship for them. And I'm like, i got to be obedient, man. The Lord's telling me to get up. When did that? And that was, you know, eight, nine years ago. And since then I've been in, in ministry from that point. So, yeah. Wow, dude. So, yeah. That's powerful, man. I'm sorry to hear that about your sister and your yeah. parents splitting. Like, that's got to be a lot. And that's the thing. People think sometimes from the outside looking in that, like, you know, Christians have it all together and their mm -hmm. lives are going to be great. And, like, no, like, there's still a lot of things that we got to go through and battle yeah. through to to still can you that's part of what keeping the faith looks like it's like when yeah. those circumstances don't go your way it's like are you going to be obedient are you going to still lean into him are you going to trust him through it right i think that's a big place of where why it's important to be having those daily encounters with god to see his character and to know who he is despite those struggles and those right. curveballs that life sends your way so yeah uh, much respect to you for being able to like yeah. battle through that come out of it see where you could have been you know closer to him through that and and seeing that you couldn't do it on your own and, yeah and having to come to, you know, the throne, yeah, yeah, come back to him. It, it, that's big. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was, it was definitely a, uh, um, uh, it, it was, it was a process. Um, um, um. So th I see the Lord now, how He was operating then, even whenever I wasn't necessarily choosing Him. You know, so it's. Uh, I'm just so thankful that you know. Now I feel like I can lose my job, but I can still have joy. You know. Yeah. And, I can just cling to joy. I, that was prophesied over me twice over this past year. And I'm like, that's a dumb word. I'm like, I don't, can you just give me like, you're going to go to the nations or something or whatever like that. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just like, this is whatever. And then, uh, you know, I, I realized when it was prophesied over me, I'm like, I had given my joy um, away because of X, Y, Z. And uh, so, yeah, whenever, especially when I lost my job, man, I was like, Lord, the enemy's not getting my joy. Yeah. I'm like, if he took it away or if you did, I'm not going to be depressed about this. I'm like, Lord, you have me. You have my family. I'm just going to laugh. Yeah. And I'm saying that while I'm crying. I'm, like, I'm just going to laugh, Lord. <laughs> I'm just going to laugh. It ain't getting my joy. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, just cling to it. So, yeah. Well, that's beautiful, bro. And thank you for sharing as much as you did today. Thank you for being open and vulnerable yeah. and honest about your journey and just what the Lord's put on your heart. I uh, really enjoyed this, man. I, I got a lot from this one personally. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. And, uh, man, seriously, there's going to be so many more great things to happen here. So I'm I'm super blessed to be able to, to be here with you today and just get to know you better too. So thanks for having me, man. Heck yeah, man. Where can the people find you? Did you want to plug anything as far as your, your business goes? Sure, yeah. So you can, uh, if you want to follow my like personal Instagram or something, you can go to Kenneth Clary 12 uh, if you want to look at some real estate photography things or just see what it's like to have a kingdom business, because I'm just giving it to him as you're looking into doing that sort of thing. Um, uh, it is Legacy Photo TX is my uh, is my Instagram. So, uh, yeah, and that'll take you to my Facebook and stuff like that, too. So, That's yeah. beautiful, bro. I love that. And then your podcast is called Our Table. Our Table Podcast TX. So we we have a Facebook. We haven't done any episodes in the past probably like five months or so. Um now that I have a little bit more time on my hands. Yeah, right. We we've decided, hey, we're gonna we're gonna take some uh, some action on that. So we're gonna be talking about some things like truth versus tolerance soon, and um, holiness and fear of the Lord. So stuff like that. Yeah, good stuff are coming. So yeah, yeah. So, go, go listen to my wife. She's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys are listening, man, I, I think that Kenneth was a true blessing to you, and I know that other people are out there seeking for more. You know, Jesus podcast, and I I, I think you'd. Uh, really benefit from listening to that one because you can't listen to I Like Birds every day. And, you know, we don't do that many episodes. <laughs> so if you had to go and check out another one that you that you wanted to, check out his and his wife. So, But as for everybody listening and watching, make sure you subscribe to the show. Please share this episode specifically with a friend that you think could benefit it, whether it be the infertility, infertility story, the loss of a loved one, a worship leader, how church should be. I feel like we covered so many great yeah. topics today that somebody else can really benefit from. So please share it if you don't mind. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube. And if you want to help us out and partner with us you can do so on patreon we launched it in may 1st super exciting i know it's so great man we already have 10 on there so shout out to all Sweet. 10 of you that are yeah. actually uh, partnering with us it is 
every single time one of them came in, bro, like the emails, I would just smile with joy. Like, Lord, you look what you're doing. People believe in what we're doing. Like, yeah. you're faithful, Lord. So thank you to all 10 of you. Uh, some shout outs will be coming around the way at the end of the month for that as well. Uh, and then also, if you want to support the ministry in any way, uh, just to give a little one time giving, you can go to I like birds ministry.com. I like birds ministry.com slash support. Or you can go get a copy of uh, 21 Days in Africa on that website as well. Uh, I'll even sign it and send it your way. It'll help bless the ministry and also read a little bit more about my story and a mission trip to Africa. So definitely appreciate y'all being here. And we'll see you next time for another great episode about Jesus. All right. Cheers. Thank you.